And then we watched some torture porn while eating popcorn. Just cute girl things, you know, <laughs> just girl stuff. And you just stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Cherry Valor. I'm a BDSM clown and a masochist. <laughs> a masochist is somebody who draws perhaps pleasure, but to me, some kind of value out of exploring the boundaries of their body and their mind through the practice of pain and pain processing. So I feel like for me, the big turning point in my masochism was when I joined my local community in Seattle and I was at this dungeon multiple days a week just getting the absolute shit kicked out of me. Mostly impact scenes, mostly completely non-sexual and just really diving into what masochism can do for my body and for my mind and the release and yeah. so. Joining my local community <laughs> and having them beat me up. The short answer is no. My masochism is something that I explore with a play partner or in a hook suspension session that I've negotiated and I've prepared for. It's not something where I just want somebody to walk up to me at a play party and spank me. So, no, um, <laughs> masochism is something that you should be prepared for and with people that you trust in an environment that you trust, at least for me. So, it's not that I can take a lot of pain as much as I've learned how to process pain very well. I don't really like to think about pain processing as having a high pain tolerance or a low pain tolerance. It's true that people with different, different bodies, with different diets, different whatever, might experience pain very differently. However, most of the time, masochism has much more to do with the process of dealing with pain rather than having a high pain tolerance and being able to take a lot of pain. But yeah, I can process a lot of pain. <laughs> So somebody once asked me if, because I'm a masochist, I like to stub my toe. And the answer is no, because I'm a human being and that sucks. <laughs> but for me, I think that when you're playing with pain in a kink context, you're prepared for it and you can get in the headspace for it and you can turn it into whatever it is that you turn pain into. In all contexts, I think pain still sucks in its own way. <laughs> so I think the big difference between pain in a non-king context is that it's not something that you have agreed to necessarily. It's not something that you are in control of in any way and it can be much more jarring, much more dangerous. There's a myriad of reasons why your body might not enjoy that experience over the kink context in which you have a lot more control over that experience and you're prepared for it. I actually do like giving pain and I, I think that my sadism comes from my experience as a masochist and I actually think being a masochist makes me a good sadist because I intimately understand what I'm doing to the other person because I've experienced it myself. And then when I see the look <laughs> in the bottom's eyes, I know how good that feels. And so I can empathetically really tap into that and enjoy that experience through them because I've been on both sides of it. So yes, I really enjoy both sides. So for me, I never really transform pain into pleasure. I more draw pleasure from the process, the entire process of the experience. That being said, yes, I think all of my masochistic scenes involve me getting into some kind of a headspace. What that headspace is varies a lot depending on the scene. So 
some scenes I'm laughing a lot and I'm dealing with the pain by getting into a very giggly, sometimes bratty, but sometimes just goofy headspace, whereas other very intense scenes, I get very quiet or perhaps submissive and I'm just breathing through it, and getting into a meditative zen sort of space. So it's different every time, but it's definitely a distinct headspace that's different from where I am outside of kink. One thing I almost always do with a new partner is use my safe word before I actually need to. Doing so lets me see how my partner will react to my safe word and it also lets my partner know that I'll use a safe word and don't have any trouble with that and therefore both of our trust in each other develops much much more and so I think that's a really good thing to do. Another thing is um, just really make sure that you understand what it is that you're doing. Don't just try a new kind of sadomasochistic play that you've seen without knowing anything about the process because little, little details that are very easy to get right can also fuck up the whole process and make something very dangerous. When I'm in subspace in a masochistic scene, I can definitely be a danger to myself. I get really high and really greedy for more pain. And because I know this about myself, I try and let my play partner know before we actually begin during our negotiation and I'll tell them how I get and I will hopefully be able to trust them to know, sometimes you'll have to be the one to say that a scene is done when I am getting a bit too greedy for it or if it just feels like it's time. And know that it's always better to stop a scene before you've maybe reached your limit if you're unsure than to go too far and hurt yourself or end up having a drop or otherwise. So don't be afraid to just stop when you're having a really, really good time and not push yourself over the edge. So sub drop or bottom drop is something that can happen any period of time after usually an intense session where you've expended all of these endorphins and you get this super nice rush and this adrenaline high and then because you're all the way up here then sometimes you can have a bit of a crash and feel a bit low after a scene. It's pretty common but it's also okay. The most important thing is to have really good aftercare put in place. So something right after the session, whatever your aftercare might be or might look like. But I also really, really recommend texting your play partner or calling them a day or two after to check in because the drop can be a bit delayed. So just check in a couple of days after and usually with a little conversation, everything's good. I would start small and ideally start with an experienced and trusted top uh, that's not always available to everyone. So really seek resources on what you're doing. Impact play is a really good place to start as long as you stick to parts of the body that are safer, that you can go a bit harder on and not have to worry, obviously like the ass. And take it slow and really really put a lot of emphasis on the aftercare. When you're expending a lot of endorphins and getting so high from the play, then it's kind of easy to have a bottom drop or something a couple days after, and you just want to make sure everybody feels safe and taken care of, and yeah, so play safe and take care of each other and have fun. Start small.